Ever have one of those days where you just want to yell and scream and cry and like you just feel so much fear and frustration and anyway I was having one of those days. I'm actually really surprised that I'm sitting here doing this video looking as calm as I am right now because earlier this morning I was on a mission. I was on a mission to take a few blocks walk to um, the Red Cross. That is not too, too, well, I didn't think it was too far for me um, to return a walker. Now, the thing is that I have had this walker for six months and I will admit that I've only used it maybe two or three times. The first couple months I realized it was too low for me or that's what I thought the problem was because it wasn't helping in the area that my the weakness of my leg is. It still felt like difficult to navigate it and it kind of felt more cumbersome have, having it than it being helpful. Then I realized, okay, well, I, I still have it for a bit. I should give it a chance. I got it adjusted and I thought everything was okay, but I still wasn't using it. It was sitting more than it was being used. And then today, well, this week was the date that I was supposed to return it because it was on loan. And I wasn't feeling too bad about it because I was like, okay, it's been sitting more than it's being used. So that gives me a sign that um, it's maybe not the right aid for me right now. And I could um, turn to some other things or explore what else is out there. The walk, ironically enough, with the walker <laughs> was tough. By the time I was even like close to the Red Cross, it was getting towards the time that it would be closing. And I had actually had so much time to get there, but it's really hot right now in Vancouver and just my pace right now is not one of any sort of ability to rush at all and I didn't think that I was going to make it not even just to the Red Cross on time but I was like I don't know what I'm going to do after this because now my leg is so weak and um, the guy who well it was coming close to 1230 I guess it was 1230 once I got there it was closing at 1230 and um, I asked a couple of guys that were coming out if um, they knew where I could go to give the walker in. And this guy said, it's closed now. You have to go and come back another time. And I was like, please, please, you have no idea what I went through to get here. And I wouldn't be able to bring it back again. Like this was a big, a way bigger deal than I thought it would be. and. I'm not even sure how I'm going to walk into the room to give it in, let alone get back home, but I'm here. Please, can you just help me get it in? And he said no. And he was very, very angry and very, very frustrated at me. And I could have been in tears, not even just because of his reaction, but because I was terrified. I was really scared. I didn't realize how week my leg could get in such a short amount of time short amount of distance and I just felt like there was nobody there to really help me and yeah I, I wanted to cry and he I said please like I just begged him and um, he said we're closed so just leave it in there. And I said, well, if I leave it there, will someone like receive it? Cause I want to make sure they know that I've returned it. I don't want to get like be responsible for, well, nobody found it. So he opens the door for me and he's huffing and puffing like, you know, about to blow the house down, making it very clear how angry he is at me. And 
he starts walking towards where the room is that I need to return the walker. But I can't even go that fast. Like, I can't even go fast at all. I, I was having trouble just taking any more steps. And I, I just did my best and I was so far behind him. And then once we got to the room, he opened it for me. I brought the walker in and he yelled at me and he said, stop, don't move anywhere closer to me. And I was like, okay. And he said, um, he, he didn't say anything actually. He came up to me, grabbed the walker, kind of rammed it into the uh, desk, put a note on it, and then shut the door, like, which almost felt like in my face. Um, and I had said thank you to him before he did that. Now, because I was so weak in my leg at that point, I was holding on to the walls now because I had no walker to walk back with. I'm holding on to the walls and the fences that are near the school that this Red Cross is at. And I'm like, do I sit on the grass? I have a towel with me. Maybe I could just sit on the grass for a while. Um, because I wasn't sure how I was even get it, gonna get across the street, like to take a bus or to take a, like anything, not even a bus, just to like get somewhere. And um, eventually, there were people along the way that were so kind and so you know offering their help. And I really appreciated that. And then I found a bench where I could just sit at and get my energy back and just kind of get centered again. And um, I realized how hungry I was, so I went to grab something to eat. And while I was sitting to eat, I called the Red Cross. And um, I could have complained about this guy's behavior. I could have, um, you know, Basically, I left a message with my name, number, and what I was returning. And in that message, I said there was a very kind gentleman that helped me when I returned it by 1230. And he opened the door for me and let me bring the walker in and he received it. Um, he was really sweet. And like, I completely made this guy sound like an angel when he was a complete ass to me. And I felt really good about it. I was like, I could have so said, you know, by the way, this person that, like I could have gone into all the things, like the frustration, the rudeness, the like, lack of compassion, all of that. But I was like, no, I hope this message gets passed on to this man. And I hope that they celebrate him and he is in total confusion of why. Because I am not going to continue this chain of pain. I feel like the last few days, the last week, but especially the last few days, I have been surrounded by family, friends, strangers, like this kind of rude behavior where I can just feel that we're all just hurt or in pain and holding that in us and taking it out on people that are innocent bystanders, standers, and it has nothing to do with us. It's completely to do with them. And if I let this guy rock me, when I was already like completely shaken from not being able to be centered in my own body and just do this thing that I wanted to get done, like very innocent thing. If I had let all of that get to me, I would have made my body feel worse, my mind feel worse. I would have let this guy ruin my own centeredness and my own peace. And all the way through my walk there, I was telling my body, 
I'm so sorry if there's something that I've done to you or to us that has made you like, you know, hesitant to keep walking or has made you weak. And if I've put us in situations that have not been kind to you, like, I apologize. If you need me to stop and rest, I will do whatever it is that you need. And once I returned the walker and I was able to get it in and that guy, even though he was rude, let me, you know, hand it in and I didn't have to worry about taking it back another time. After all of that, I thanked my legs and my body for getting us there. I thanked them so much for it. And um, yeah, I, I just refused to get into this whole cycle of like yelling back at him getting frustrated and fearful of the world and what's happening to my body getting angry at my body for not being able to continue like getting us where I wanted to be at this time no I was like I'm not doing it I'm cutting that off there is going to be no more pain and anger and resentment and it's going to be peace and love and kindness even if I'm not getting it back towards me I'm still going to hold it for myself and my fellow kind people because deep down inside I believe that everyone really is kind they just need reminders that they have it in them so yeah, I left this message. I said this very, very nice man and I described him too, like what he looked like. Helped me get the walker in when I was struggling and he was so, he was so patient and <laughs> I completely lied for him, but it felt kind of good. I, I had to hold in my laughter while I was leaving the message, but um, yeah, and then I just said, please call me back to just confirm that you received it. Because secretly I was like, oh my God, if he was so angry and did all that, I don't know like how I'm going to count on him to like make sure he did all the right things to, you know, so that I don't get in trouble for however it was received. But yeah, kill them with kindness. I think it works. And you know what? If it doesn't even work for the other person, who knows? Maybe in the long run it will. It will work for you. Like it worked to gentle my day, to make it more gentle, to make it more loving towards myself and to remind myself to do that to other people. And I had so many kind gestures along the way to that place to the Red Cross you think like it's so ironic because you think that that would be a place that they would ooze kindness but I had lots of gestures from strangers along the way who were being really kind even to the traffic person that was holding you know traffic up to make sure that I could cross the street really kind people offering their help and even on the way back especially on the way back I just could feel all the kindness because I had given so much kindness back even though he was yelling at me and yeah, I think we got to keep doing it. Um, just wanted to pass that message on, pay it forward, even if someone's giving you back some horrible, I don't know, F-bombs or their traumas and dramas on you just remember that it's something they're going through it's their own pain let's break the chain of pain and um yeah thanks all for listening